You know the vibes, it's lit sign. Money day, guys and girls, I hope you're blessed. We are back with another Sunday setups. Now, what I want to bring you guys' attention to today is, of course, like always, the website, litcapitalacademy.com, or if you're in UK, if you're in UK litcapital.co.uk. If you are new to trading, litcapital.co.uk. If you've got experience in trading, but you just need a helping hand, litcapital.co.uk. If you just want to get lit, then make sure you head over to the Lit Lounge or the Lit Store at litcapital.co.uk. Alternatively, you can book a free consultation today with us so you can see what we do, how we do it, but most importantly, how it can benefit you. Okay, we're not just your bog standard trading company teaching you generic rubbish online. We're really giving you guys the source here. So if you're not already inside the Discord, we have got free access. All you've got to do is head over to the website, litcapital.co.uk, and um, click on the packages page. You'll be directed to a page where you can make an inquiry, whether it's for our online course, our one-to-one -one mentorship, or for our community access. It's a £25 per month subscription to our community, which provides you with uh, live streams Tuesday to Friday, twice a day. Okay, We also provide you guys with live trades, with market analysis, with tutorial videos, with crypto, with stocks, with NFTs, you name it. Um, also with commodity investments, yield farming, you name it, we provide it. Lit Capital, financial markets. Okay, That name is very important because now we're in a, we're in a time of a lot of economic uncertainty and due to what's happening in Europe with Russia and Ukraine, this is causing a massive knock-on effects in the markets. So the importance of financial literacy has never been more important than what it is today. And it's very important, guys, if you're watching this video to share it with a friend, you know, share it with a friend who's maybe been thinking about getting involved in investing or who's actually been trading for quite some time, but probably um, not getting the results they've been wanting to get, or even if you're just new to the cause, okay? Um, nine, nine times out of 10, the type of uh, clients that become students um, that we teach, or even just the members in our community, are people that have had prior experience, but haven't had a good experience. And that's what's led them over to us, which has given them the best experience that they could possibly imagine. So please guys, Lit Capital, learn, interact, trade, .co.uk we've got you okay um so yeah with that being said that's enough um that's enough lit sad vibes uh we're gonna go over to the economic calendar now the vibes can never stop okay um but in regards to what we've got taking place next week um next week is the first full week of march okay we did have nfp on friday so we're gonna go into that in a bit more uh later on but for the moment in time uh, this is the first full week of March. March Madness does begin. And we can see here that really the, um, the biggest impact or the biggest news releases that are taken center stage is going to be the European interest rate. Okay, the ECB, they've got the monetary policy statement, the uh, deposit facility rate. Uh, so, you know, uh, President Lagarde is going to have a very busy week to say the least. Okay, we've also got GDP taking place on Friday. Now, every Thursday of each month, I usually only see the euro release their interest rates on a Thursday. So I guess that's the thing for them. So, you know, leading up until Thursday, you can see that the markets don't really have too much um, economic releases being released. You've got the GDP for the yen. You've got uh, the crude oil inventories as always on a Wednesday. So there isn't really anything taking place until the latter end of next week. But with that being said, we potentially can still catch some moves before, of course, the news does come in and potentially uh, change the direction of the market. Um, so with that being said, we've got, you know, GDP on Friday, but really, as we can see, we've got a lot of European news throughout next week, and we will be keeping you guys informed and up to date inside of our Discord. Um, for those of you who are not already inside the Discord, you, you, uh, we have a dedicated news team, okay? It's in the Fundamental Updates channel. We've got a dedicated news team around the clock, 24-7, um, 24 hours a day. They provide you guys with news, breaking news, giving you guys an insight to what's happening so that at the end of the day, if you are new to trading and you simply don't know where to look, or even if you've been involved in trading, but you simply don't have the right resources at your disposal, we bring everything to you in one application. Live trades, live Q and A's, daily live streams, uh, fundamental updates, economic breakdowns, uh, market analysis, tutorials, eBooks, you name it, we do it. 
you name it, we do it. All right. Um, so yeah, so with that being said, I'm going to take you guys over to the charts. And as it's just me today giving you guys the outlook, there should be, uh, I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to bless you guys. Okay, I'm going to bless you guys with quite a few pairs that I'm looking at, or not necessarily quite a few, but just the most important ones that I think can actually give us a big opportunity next week. So first and foremost, we had the NFP last week on Friday, um, and we saw the market finally push up. Now, if you guys could recall, back around the 14th of February, baby making week, of course, I know, I know. Um, that was the week where I was lost on a, li on a live stream, uh, excuse me, on a Sunday setup. And I gave you guys my outlook on the dollar. I told you it was bullish. I wanted to see it take out this high. And it took a very long time, ladies and gentlemen. But eventually, we have had price push higher. We finally had price push above the 98 area. Now, when we're looking at price, I'm, I, I really want to see price push to the 100, 100 mark. Unless I can get price moved to that 100 handle, I'm not really going to be too convinced on the dollar weakening. OK, um, really, you've got to be looking at the dollar right now on a higher time frame. OK, and that's just because really when you're taking the, when you're taking into consideration how high it came from, um, you know, there's a massive area of liquidity above. So I really would like to see price push above uh, and at least, you know, head towards these wicks, which means definitely pushing above the hundred, uh, the hundred mark. So I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for this. But of course, the dollar has been really slow. And for those who are inside our community, you'll know that we actually check out different factors to give us a stronger opinion on what we think the dollar is going to be doing. Um, for that, my friends, you can't get for free. So we won't disclose that information. But what I will say is we will be keeping you guys informed and up to date. So what I would say is this. If you haven't already, pause the video. Is it paused? It's pause, you can't hear me talking. Pause the video, okay? Press the subscribe button. Smash that bell for notifications when we provide next videos, you guys can be up to date. And share the video with a friend. But if you have already subscribed, we appreciate you, okay? We've reached a 1,000 subscribers and we gave away a brand new PS5 to celebrate that. Um, we've also got a lot of content coming you, you, your way. A lot of content, guys. So please keep supporting. We really do appreciate it. And of course, smash the like button. These things do go a long way and we really do appreciate you guys' support. Um, so with that being said, also head over to our Instagram pages where you can get free access, okay? If you head over to my Instagram page, um, institutional underscore veil, in my link tree bio, okay, in my bio, there's access to the Discord for free. This is very restricted access, but it's access nonetheless. So if you are watching this video and you, and you are interested in joining our community, reach out to me on Twitter, uh, vel underscore trades or on my Instagram handle, which is in, uh, institutional underscore vel. Let me know you're from YouTube and I'll be sure to show you guys some love. Okay. Um, so with that being said, we're going to go over to gold. Shout out Bosco. Okay. Because the gold train has really been moving. Now, this is something that I actually said on the live stream last week uh, on Tuesday, which was pretty much that we needed to see gold break above 1970. Okay. We've got a bit of imbalance above on a smaller time frame, but we really, really do need to see gold break above these areas. Reason being, in times of an economic uncertainty, commodities do very well. And due to the turmoil that economies are going through at the moment, it would only make sense for us to see a stronger, uh, for us to see stronger commodities. So, um, you know, we've seen this pushing up and, and now we are in a position where we're currently sitting inside a weekly lip block, okay? But, ladies and gentlemen, I'm calling it here, okay? On the 5th of March, I'm telling you, gold is going to reach the 2000 mark. We are going to break that 2000 mark. It may not be next week. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't tell me you blew your account because I told you it was going to go above 2000. But I can see us hitting 2000 this March. This March, March Madness, I can see gold breaking above the 2000 mark. Okay, And ultimately, gold is bullish. Silver is bullish. Commodities are bullish. There's no reason for commodities to, to take a dive right now. There is absolutely no reason. So we can expect uh, pullbacks on a smaller time frame, but ultimately we are very bullish. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to stay on the daily time frame here and just show you guys if we can get a retracement back down uh, to this candle here, 1948, I'm going to be interested in seeing um, what the buying opportunity is looking like. Of course, this is going to be depending um, on the news releases, maybe, or just depending on price action. But this, of course, is going to be a trade that we are going to keep you guys informed and up to date with 
um, on the market, or should I say uh, in the Discord, excuse me. Um, we can see here on a six hour, this candle looks a bit better at 1938, but ultimately if price can come back down to my institutional level, I'm going to buy it like there's no tomorrow. I just think that it's probably highly unlikely that prices would come down that low. So with that being said, you know, price has made a higher high at the moment. What we're now going to be looking for is the higher low for price to then go on and make the new higher high. Now you can see we have given out some buys along the way. You know, we gave out a buy, gosh, quite some time ago. You know, we gave out a buy here on the 16th of February. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. But this was back in the, uh, in the baby making week. All right, in the baby making week, we gave out a big trade here with gold, okay? And if you held that, look at the pip count, guys. Look at the pip count, okay? It's over a thousand pips there. So again, you know, just bringing ourselves back to reality, back to today and what we're looking at for the week ahead. We want to see a stronger gold. We want to see a stronger gold. Um, but we do understand that if the dollar does continue to pump, we may get a pullback with, uh, with commodities, which is what we want. But at the moment, quite recently, we've been noticing that the, um, the commodities along with the indices have been moving hand in hand. Um, and there's actually a massive reason for this, which we have broken down in the economic section, uh, in the economic breakdowns channel in the Discord. So if you're not already in the Discord, you definitely need to head over there to see exactly what's happening and why we're seeing um, certain pairs correlate with each other when usually they're meant to be doing the complete opposite. Um, next, I'm going to go over that dirty 30. Okay, for those of you that know, uh, US 30 is my baby. And I've uh, been trading US 30 for quite some time now. Now, I just want to show you guys, I'm going to head over to the Discord here, and I'm going to show you guys on the 3rd of March, today's the 5th, okay? So two days ago, um, I gave the buy setup. This was before NFP, okay? I gave the buy setup inside of the community. Um, if I can come out of that, and we can see, you know, shortly after we was able to back over um, 100 pips, over 360 pips, okay? We got that push up. And I told them, as you can see here with the arrow, I mentioned that we was also looking to short from this area as well. So it was an imbalance for that we was looking for out of a session candle, which we had to move up. And then of course we wanted to move down. Now we got the move down because of course over here, what we can see is price played into that candle, which we expected, and then it pushed down lower. Now we can see that I'm looking at the 32,500 handle below, which price has not yet come close enough to, but price is on its way. Now we've had a 730 pip drop. Okay, sorry, excuse me. I shouldn't have read that there. All I should have just told you guys is the two trades combining the 730 pip drop since our short setup yesterday. So I should have read that. God damn. Okay, so the 730 pip drop and then the 365 or the 360 pip gain, that's over a thousand pips on one pair, that dirty 30. So um, with that being said, of course, we can see over here when we do have the short setup, okay, we can see, right, prices drop down over 737 pips, okay, we've actually, it's actually rained, we've made it rain here, guys, from catching the buy, to then pushing down into the sell, and even getting into another buy down here, right, and this buy down here was, was, was adequate, okay, we was able to catch enough pips here, to then say, okay, cool, fine, didn't reach our ultimate target, which was back up the top, but we was in a short, which meant that we was ultimately able to have a successful hedging trade here whilst in profit for both trades. And of course, allowing price to do its thing and make its way down to the lower room. So with that being said, what I'm looking at with US 30 at the moment, uh, we didn't get prices, you know, reach down to this low. So if I can just go on the weekly time frame here and show you guys, uh, we've got, uh, well, in fact, if I go on the daily first and I'll zoom out, you can see here, we've got a daily candle down here, which we once had a reaction from, which I'm expecting us to reach. We are in a, we're in a bearish phase at the moment. Okay, well, what happened? Why did I do that? Uh, we're in a bearish phase at the moment. So, you know, pullbacks are inevitable, but in terms of how, in terms of a correction, I can't see that right now. Um, JP Morgan have actually said that they see the S&P dropping to 3,800. Now, if the S&P drops to 3,800, that's another 15% from where it is at the moment. It might be slightly under, but nonetheless, that means that we can see a lot of downside potential from US 30 if it is actually to go there. So we will keep you guys up to date and in tune throughout the rest of the week. Uh, and now we're gonna go over to the next pair, okay? The next pair will be uh, the DAX, okay? 
The DAX, which is the Deutsche, okay, for those of you who don't trade the DAX, you're missing out. There's been a lot of opportunities with the DAX. Um, and of course, on these live streams, we do provide you guys with a lot of information. Um, shout out to Alessa, one of our students from Germany. Uh, she's someone that, that actually really and truly brought the Deutsche to our, to our, to our attention because she's living in Germany. Um, but we can see here there's a lot of downside potential. Now, of course, Germany is actually the leading and the strongest economy in Europe. So if the German economy is struggling, then that tends to be an indication to how the European, uh, the European Central Bank or just the European, uh, uh, the European countries as a whole or the European economy, I have to say, excuse me, are actually uh, progressing or in this case, regressing. So the, the DAX at the moment, well, all, all equities have been hit. Okay, all equities have been hit. Of course, we've got the Russian and Ukraine conflict. That is causing a massive knock-on effect with European stocks. European stocks are taking a hammering, okay? They're down over 20%. So we have to understand that unless there is some type of ceasefire or there's some type of, uh, there's some type of great news that just, you know, pops out of the sky magically and everything is just, everything is whisked away like it never happened then we're probably going to continue to see the stock market continue to fall. So with the DAX, we're actually, continue, we're actually expecting to see a continued drop. I've got a weekly candle here, um, which I do think we can get a reaction from, okay? Um, but as you can see here on the weekly, we've still got a lot of downside potential. Now, I was actually talking on one of the live streams um, throughout the week just gone, which was when you're looking at these charts, if I just go on a blank canvas, okay, especially with US 30, but... We look at the DAX here, we can see that this has been going higher and higher and higher since the market first opened, right? Which means we've never really had a proper substantial pullback. We've never had a proper pullback. So in order for us to get these type of proper pullbacks or a pullback that's deep enough for us to say to consider it a valid retracement, there needs to be some type of catastrophic news events taking place in order for the markets to drop so much. Because I tell you, Elon Musk tweet in, that he's going to resign isn't going to make the market drop how they're dropping. There needs to be something that's catastrophically uh, given the green light for these markets to be dumping off. And let's be honest, the markets have been overbought for quite some time. So this is actually very expected. This has been uh, a ticking time bomb for us to see the markets reset, okay, and actually uh, substantially drop into an area which we could feel comfortable in actually buying, okay. No one wants to buy at the highs. And let's be real, okay? If prices can stay where they are right now, that is still too high, okay? Um, so ideally, we're trying to get price come beneath the 50% into a discounted area where we could buy from. And of course, that would be very, very, very lucrative um, if we could hold that trade as a swing trade because of course, um, you know, after each war, it's been historically proven that the markets always rebound. So there's definitely is a rebound coming. We've just got to find the bottom first before we try to get in. So um, last but not least, I'm going to go over GU. Um, now, GBP USD has been very, very good. Um, from a technical perspective, it's usually played out. Now, I know there's a lot of things happening here on my chart, so I'm going to break it down for you. Uh, my green levels are institutional levels, and my blue lines are daily structure levels. Now, we can see that we've had a lot of moves from these daily structure levels, which has given us you know, some really good, clear sniper entries. And of course, if you guys are trying to get involved in trading or if you guys are struggling with having good entries, this is one of the main reasons why you need to be with us because we're going to show you guys how to be pew, 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 how to be snipers. Um, and with that being said, uh, we've got a daily candle down here, which the market actually closed um, hovering just inside of the candle. So I wasn't really too convinced on, on taking this buy. This was a setup that I had for quite some time. But uh, due to, of course, the NFP being released, uh, the do uh, GU started coming down because the dollar was pumping. Um, so I didn't actually take the buy as it stands. I did just want to see how things would plan out. I wasn't convinced that we'd get the reaction on Friday and it just, it just so happens that we didn't. Um, so what I would be looking for this week is to see if we can get a rebound. Um, and of course, you know, uh, the time you watch this, the markets uh, may or may not be open actually because this comes out on a Saturday. Um, so we are going to be paying attention to the gaps. Okay, for those of you who can remember last week, there was crazy gaps in the markets. GBP USD gapped up crazy. There was loads of gaps. So you know we have to pay attention to if there's going to be any gaps this time around. And ultimately, that's going to give us an indication on what we should be doing. Um, 
with with GU. So we will be keeping you guys informed and up to date. Um, but just from a daily picture here, uh, it has been very bearish. You know, each time it's pulled back up, it's been in a better area for us to sell from. Um, and if I go on a weekly quickly and just go on a blank canvas for you guys, on a weekly, we've got a weekly candle down here, which I would like prices to reach. But because I am anticipating the dollar pulling back, I would like to see if GU could at least push higher for us to be able to catch a short. So I'm actually looking for a, a buy to sell scenario. Um, I'm not too keen on on. I'm not too keen. I'm not too keen really to even take a trade on GU to be honest with you because that 30 30 US 30 pays the bills. You know we was able to catch a thousand pips on a Thursday before NFP, which meant that Friday when this came, it wasn't really a, there wasn't really a need for us to catch a to catch a trade. The, the community had been fed. So, you know, when you catch a thousand pips in a week, it's very important for you guys to take a step back and say, whoa, am I just continuously being in the market because I can? Is there a reason why I'm here? Have my targets not been reached? Because if your targets have been reached, there shouldn't be a problem with you taking a paper trade. And if this, is, if this had uh, flew up, you know, 100 or 200 pips, or in this case, reached full TP at 376, yeah, I'd be like, damn, I missed the trade, but I'd also be very happy that my analysis is coming true as well. So if you do want to understand how we're able to break down these charts and find such good entries, I strongly would encourage you guys to reach out to my Instagram, which is institutional underscore vel. Reach out to us on Facebook, uh, not on Facebook, excuse me. You can reach out to us on Facebook, but you're going to have a better success reaching out to us via the website, lickcapital.co.uk. So guys, I want to say, Thank you for tuning in. Those are the pairs that I'm looking at. I will be keeping you guys informed and up to date as the week goes on. Of course, we do have a lot of European news and that European news is going to be important because there's a lot of European conflict right now. So please guys, be sure to trade safe. Take your time on these charts. Don't be out here trading with no stop loss and make sure you tap into lickcapital.co.uk. Have a wonderful day, guys. Always remember, every day is money day. Peace.